inspirational. What have we learned? Well, we have learned that you can't teach an old dog new tricks because it's illegal and you will go to jail. Okay, two things. One, BGP is not just any old dog. And two, no one has been jailed for using BGP flow spec <clears throat> uh, yet. Welcome back to Decoding Packets Service Provider Technology Series. This video continues in the realm of BGP-based security, covering BGP flow specification or flow spec. Let's begin. So our agenda for this video, we want to introduce BGP flow spec and discuss its high level implementation. And we also want to discuss its associated concepts in a decent amount of detail. So at an extremely high level, BGP flow spec can be described as a mechanism that allows for centralized traffic policy control. But what type of traffic policies are being controlled here? Well, most traffic policies usually implemented either using a router ACL or firewall rules. Policy based routing policies where certain packets are given a treatment that differs from their treatment in the routing table, limiting the rate of certain traffic or even changing the QS markings of certain packets. The easiest way of thinking about this, if you are familiar with ACLs or firewall filters, is to imagine that instead of writing the ACL or the firewall policy directly on each filtering device, the policy can now be written on a single device that can then use BGP to disseminate that policy to the entire infrastructure. In that way, this very much resembles the common SDN design, which consists of a controller that is a device where the policy is written or generated and several clients that is devices where this policy is ultimately implemented. Lastly, it should be noted that the policy is applied to the ingress traffic only. In other words, only the traffic entering the client devices is affected. Furthermore, most implementations will also allow the operator to choose which specific interfaces to apply the receive policy on and which interfaces to leave untouched. One great thing about the solution is that it is able to leverage the current policy implementation of the client devices infrastructure. So this essentially implies that a Cisco IOS router will be able to program the incoming flow spec policy in directly into its TCAM, while a Junos router would be able to translate the same policy to a firewall filter and then apply it to its interfaces. This makes the solution as efficient as the client hardware allows it to be because it's leveraging already developed technologies for its functionality. So that was the 10,000 foot view, and now it's time to zoom in a little bit closer. First things first, what is a flow specification? Well, very conveniently, it is defined in RFC 5575, Dissemination of Flow Specification Rules. Let's read. A flow specification is an end tuple consisting of several matching criteria that can be applied to IP traffic. Nice. A statement cannot be crafted any more clearly than that. Moving on. So leveraging BGP, what's that? What do you mean that's not clear? I thought that was as clear as the waters of Lake Erie of the mid 1960s. Ah, I see the problem now. So let's go over it a bit more. <laughs> Why not? So let's solve the issue of N tuple first. For the people with a background in mathematics, you probably already know, but for the rest of us, well, it simply is an ordered collection of elements, and N notates the number of elements in that collection, or more technically, the set. So how does that relate to our topic of flow specification? Well, think of it as a set or collection of criteria that would be used for matching a packet. An example helps. So here is a set of three elements, a source IP address, a destination IP address, and a protocol that a packet can be matched against. So let's say from source 1.1.1.1 to destination 2.2.2.2, and the protocol carried is TCP. That in itself is an end tuple. 
Here is another example, and you can pause the video, fill these placeholders with actual IPs, etc., and go over that to realize the concept for yourself. So, in the application of flow specification, the fields in a received packets header will be matched against a policy or an end tuple. If the packet matches, it is a hit and the action suggested in the policy will be carried out. If any of the fields mismatch, so every single field must match the policy, but if any of the fields mismatch, it is a miss. And just like in ACL, the packet is then matched against the next policy. Now, I very deftly shifted, quite seamlessly might I add, from saying end duple to saying policy. The fact is that in flow spec, the end duple always manifests itself as a policy. We shall soon see this in action. Now, a major idea in flow spec is to use BGP for the dissemination of the rules. Because of course BGP is used for the dissemination of the rules. This should not be a shocker by any means in the year 2019. I mean, here's how the story goes, right? We need something, we look around, and we eventually look at BGP only to realize that we can already incorporate it within BGP and don't really have to reinvent the wheel. But exactly how? Well, that's simple. You define new SAFIs, and in this particular case, for previously existing IPv4 and IPv6 AFIs. Specifically, there are two separate SAFIs defined for each AFI. 133 for flow specifications that belong in the global context, and 134 for flow specifications within the context of a VRF. So yes, we can apply specific rules to traffic that flows in the global context and specific separate rules for VRF traffic. But this NLRI, while being similar conceptually to other BGP NLRIs, is still somewhat different and rather unique. First, the similarity. One may not realize, but all BGP NLRIs, even a simple IPv4 route for that matter, they're encoded as TLVs, type length values. This one is no different in that regard. Where the difference exists, though, is the flexible structure of this NLRI. For a concept like flow spec, if you think about it, this flexibility is almost mandatory. Let's go back to ACLs and firewall rules for a second. Does each single ACE in an ACL consist of all possible elements that are available? Probably not. Some may have a protocol defined such as TCP, UDP, ICMP. Some may not be looking at that field at all. Some others may inspect the QoS marking of a packet, but most others may not care about that at all. So extrapolating that to flow spec, it must also provide similar flexibility when writing the rules, different fields to filter upon, if you will. Thus, the NLRI itself is constituted from entities called components. We discuss these next, but think of them as sub-TLVs within the NLRI, which itself is a TLV. Let's take a quick look at why the BGP infrastructure is so advantageous to the flow specification design. First of all, with the use of route reflectors and confederations, BGP already provides an efficient and proven design for the point-to-multipoint distribution of any information, and that applies to flow spec information as well. In fact, in most of the already deployed BGP infrastructure, the peers can be programmed to negotiate the new SAFIs between them with minimal disruption. Next, BGP allows for the advertisement of this information responsibly across domains and between ASs. Think eBGP. And finally, the information carried within the flow spec advertisements, especially from outside the domain, that information can be easily verified against the unicast routing table. Because more often than not, the protocol populating the unicast routing table, at least for inter-domain routes, will also be BGP. So it becomes pretty easy to verify the flow spec information against that information. Thus, BGP inherently provides substantial advantages for the, for the flow spec design, and that's why it was chosen. So let us take a look at the various fields or components that flow spec provides for us to use. Now, 
this list should look pretty familiar to most network engineers. What you have here are basically fields in the IP packets layer 3 or layer 4 header that one can match packets against. There are simple things like source and destination addresses to somewhat more complex things such as if the IP packet is a fragment. There are yet other things such as TCP flags, SYN, ACK, RESET, etc. and packet length. All in all, FlowSpec can provide a vast majority of the functionality available in the ACLs or the firewall rules, just more centralized. We will not go into the structure of these component types, but the encoding, the encoding in the NLRI that is, is done in such a way that all of the flexibility of an ACE is easily coded in. For example, types 4, 5, and 6, these are all layer 4 related components or port related components, they can each carry a single port, a range of ports, all ports greater than a port, all ports less than a port, two separate ranges of ports, etc. It covers all of those scenarios. We will look at these when we capture packets in the demo, but if you want to jump ahead, RFC 5575 has all of the encodings well documented. Best of luck. Before we move on, it helps to realize two basic principles. Number one. Each NLRI needs at least one component. This should be fairly self-explanatory, but if not, think of how can you have a BGP advertisement or any advertisement at all that is null. What's the point of that? Secondly, none of the components are mandatory. In other words, as long as you provide at least one component, BGP is good to go to create an NLRI and advertise it. With the NLRI and its components, we have solved the issue of matching the traffic. But what do we do with that traffic once it's matched? Well, we must act upon it. For example, permit that traffic, drop it, rate limited, remark it, so on and so forth. The NLRI itself does not describe these actions. These actions are in fact carried separately in attached extended communities. So the NLRI components are used to match the traffic, but the action or actions to be taken upon that traffic are carried in the attached communities. There are only so many of them defined, so it is feasible for us to cover them here. First, type OX8006 or 0X8006. This carries in it a traffic rate for the matching traffic. This is fairly self-explanatory too, but two things might be noted here. First, the bit rate is carried in bytes per second. So, but remember, the creation of the policy still depends on the operating system of the controller. So most controllers will still allow for the rate to be programmed in good old bits per second, but it is carried in bytes per second in, in the NLRI or inside the community. Now, it might be counterintuitive, but this community is also used to carry the deny action. <laughs> How? For a deny action, the controller is expected to set a data rate of, ready for it, zero bytes per second. So that's that. You see zero bytes per second and you drop the traffic. Next is one that only has very sparse support. So this is 0x8007 and it can carry two actions within it. First is to allow the client to sample the match traffic. This is basically a form of flow accounting, but for more information, please look at RFC 5575. For an idea of how this can be implemented on a client, look for the command sample in the Junus command reference. You could just Google for that one. Second is a continue action that essentially allows the match traffic to be further processed by the remaining flow spec policies. This especially makes sense if you just want to sample the traffic with a rule, but then keep on passing the traffic through the rest of the policy to see you know, if another match occurs or you want to rate limit or remark or something or some other action must be taken. One should note that this community is specifically not supported by Cisco devices. So current support, Junos only, Cisco devices do not support it. Next is type 0x8008, which carries a route target within it. So essentially, it can be used to force the client to pass the traffic to a VRF for further processing. 
that could be a VRF where you know the security devices can inspect the suspicious traffic. Needless to say, the VRF is identified by the route target carried in the community, so it must be defined on the client, or the client must know what to do with it. Type 0x8009 can remark the DSCP value of the match packet, so I'm not going to go into that. Type 0x0800, now this is not defined in the original RFC, but it is defined in a separate draft. This carries an IP address where the packets can be mirrored for additional processing, so for like span ports. So as of the recording of this video, the support for this community is also not 100% across all platforms. So that happens to be all for this time, but in our next video, we will close out the topic of BGP flow spec with a live demo, and as we often do with the dissection of a few captured packets. Till then, I hope you've enjoyed this video and are looking forward to the next one. Thanks.